In this presentation, I will teach you intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. In the last lecture, I explained you how silicon and germanium forms four covalent bonds to attain the noble gas configuration. In this case, we have silicon atom, so we require four additional silicon atoms to donate four electrons so that we have eight electrons in the outermost orbit. This is structure we are going to use in this presentation also, but this one is little bit bulky. So I'm going to eliminate few things that will make this structure simple. I will not represent the nucleus and orbits like this, but I'm going to draw a circle and this circle will represent the atom. In this case, we have silicon atom and to represent the silicon atom, I will write SI inside the circle. If you want to make the atom for germanium, draw the circle and write GE inside it. Now let's see how we have to represent these four covalent bonds. I'm going to represent them simply like this. The last thing that we have to see in this form of representation is electron. You can see we have electrons here, four electrons and uh, these four electrons we will represent by negative sign. So this is the easiest way to represent this structure and we are going to use this form of representation instead of this one. So let's move to the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Here you can see this structure that I was talking about. We have four covalent bonds for every atom present in this structure and in that way we have eight electrons in the outermost orbit. This arrangement of atoms we call as lattice. This lattice is very important and we have millions and millions of atoms present in this lattice. This is the lattice for silicon because we have silicon atoms here. In the same way we have the lattice for germanium when there are germanium atoms present. Now we will move to the intrinsic semiconductor what it is. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductors. What do you mean by this pure semiconductors. Here you can see the lattice for silicon in which we have only silicon atoms. No other atoms are allowed here and thus we call it pure. When there is no other atom present in the lattice, it is the pure semiconductor or you may also call it intrinsic semiconductor. So this is the one thing that you should keep in your mind and now you can easily distinguish between the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor. In extrinsic semiconductor, we have impurity atoms. We don't have only silicon, but we also have some other atoms like aluminium boron that we will see later. And uh, the free electrons are only due to the natural causes. This is very important point. In case of intrinsic semiconductor, the free electrons, it means the electrons which are ready to participate in the conduction are only due to the natural causes. The natural causes like light energy, thermal energy. When you give the thermal energy, the electrons present in the covalent bond will obtain the kinetic energy and they will break this bond and will be available for the conduction. So we can say that with increase in temperature, the number of free electrons available will also increase. The next point is the temperature coefficient. Silicon and germanium, silicon and uh, germanium both have negative temperature coefficient and as you already know in case of negative temperature coefficient when we increase the temperature the resistance of material will decrease. This implies that with increase in temperature with increase in temperature resistance will decrease and uh, in case of conductors the metals the temperature coefficient is positive and uh, thus by increasing the temperature the resistance will increase. So here we have opposite of that and you should keep this thing in your mind because sometimes they will ask it in multiple choice questions. So this is important. Now you already know intrinsic semiconductor and uh, you have idea about the extrinsic semiconductor. In this we add impurity atoms. We don't have only silicon present in the lattice but other atoms are also present and we call these atoms impurity atoms. So let's talk about this impurity atom first. Two types of impurities are there. The first one is the pentavalent, penta 
valent impurity and the second one is trivalent impurity now we will first discuss pentavalent impurity the pentavalent impurity are the atoms present in the fifth group you have to refer the periodic table and locate the fifth group you will find the atoms present there when you see their atomic numbers you will find they have five electrons in the outermost orbit the pentavalent materials are antimony phosphorus arsenic as is the symbol for arsenic i hope it is correct let's see as is the symbol for arsenic and this is the fifth group in the same way if we talk about the trivalent impurities then they are the elements of third group they will have three electrons in the outermost orbit it is very simple so let me write down some of the elements from the third group we have boron gallium aluminium of course and indium so these are the two types of impurities that we have the pentavalent impurity the fifth group element and the trivalent impurity the third group elements so we add impurity atoms to intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor to have extrinsic semiconductor at what proportion we have to add this impurity atoms to the lattice we add one part in 10 million this means in 10 million atoms of intrinsic semiconductor we add one impurity atom in 10 million atoms of pure semiconductor we add one atom of impurity or one impurity atom this is very important and the next thing that you should keep in your mind is the addition of this impurity atoms will totally change the electrical properties of the intrinsic or pure semiconductor material the process of adding certain impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor is called doping this word we are going to use a lot in this course doping doping is the process of adding impurity atoms whether pentavalent or trivalent to the intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor this intrinsic semiconductor is pure semiconductor and we dope this intrinsic semiconductor with the impurity atoms and we have our extrinsic semiconductor so this is the word that we use for the addition of impurity atoms to the pure semiconductor because of this doping we get extrinsic semiconductor of two types the first one is n type you must have learned this things in your 12th standard the n type semiconductor and the p type semiconductor in n type semiconductor and this both are the types of extrinsic semiconductor right and uh, in n type semiconductor we add pentavalent impurity whereas in p type semiconductor we add trivalent impurity we add pentavalent impurity and in p type semiconductor we add trivalent impurity so this is very important thing that you should remember the types of extrinsic semiconductor now we will study how n type semiconductor is formed for this i will copy it copy and then i will paste it i will drag it down and we will see how we have n type semiconductor as i have already told you in case of n type semiconductor we add pentavalent impurity so i'm going to add antimony sb antimony to this lattice and uh, i will remove this silicon atom instead of this i will have antimony sb and uh, 
as I have already told you, the antimony, the fifth group element, will have five electrons in its outermost shell. So four electrons will be combined with this, this, this and uh, this silicon atoms. Four electrons are combined in this covalent bonds and uh, we still have one electron left. So I will represent this electron with a negative sign. This one is the fifth electron of the antimony. Let me write this thing down. The fifth electron, the valence electron, the fifth valence electron of antimony. Okay, and uh, as you already know, the electrons are the charge carriers, and because of this, we have current through the material. So we have electron, and this is free electron. If I apply the potential difference across this material, then definitely this electron will be drifted, and we have electric current. So in n-type semiconductor, we have electrons as charge carrier. You should keep this thing in your mind. We have, we have, electron as charge carriers right in the same way if you approach for the p type semiconductor then i will again paste this diagram and uh, i will add trivalent impurity in p type we will add trivalent impurity and uh, i will remove this silicon atom and uh, we will have the trivalent atom let's say it is boron in trivalent we have three electrons in the outermost orbit or the valence cell and uh, these three electrons will be combined to let's say this silicon atom this silicon atom and this silicon atom so this silicon atom will not get the electron to have the covalent bond so there will be absence of electron and we will represent the absence of electron by the hole this is hole and it is nothing but the absence of electron absence of electron this hole is very important concept and uh, we will learn more about holes in the next presentation right now you have to know only one thing that we have two types of charge carriers in semiconductor the first one is electron okay and the second one is the hole so in p-type semiconductors we have holes as charge carriers whereas in case of n-type semiconductors we have electrons as charge carriers we will see how holes act as the charge carriers in the next presentation that will be very interesting and very important i hope you got how we obtain the n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductor so if i make a semiconductor material that is of n-type then let's see how it looks we have the donor ions i'm going to represent the donor ions by positive why we have donor ions because we have electrons and the atom donating this electron will possess the positive charge and we are representing them with this positive sign okay and we have electrons as majority charge carriers so i will represent electron so many electrons because they are the majority charge carriers and we also have some holes it is not like we have only electrons in the n type semiconductor and only holes in the p type semiconductor but we also have some holes in n type and some electrons in p type so we will uh, make p type semiconductor material also in this we have holes so the atom having the holes it means it is going to take some electron it is going to have some electron from other atoms so i will represent this by negative sign okay and we have holes as the majority charge carriers so i will make so many holes like we made electrons in this case this is n type and this one is p type and also we have minority charge carriers as electrons in this p type so this is how we will represent the n type material and p type material these are the immobile ions or we will write 
donor ions the electrons are the majority charge carriers and in this case we have holes as majority charge carriers and uh, here holes are minority charge carriers and in this case electrons are minority charge carriers right so this is all that you should know in this presentation the boron atom will get electron from neighboring atoms and hence it has negative charge that's why we are having the ions with the negative charge so this is all for this presentation in the next presentation we will study about the electron versus hole flow and also we will uh, develop the mass action law a very important presentation so see you in the next one